All right, settle down quickly, quickly, quickly. I've got to wrap things up soon. All right, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the word of God will not only inform you, but it shall transform you from the inside out. Say aloud up. All right. Does anyone remember what was the significance of last Sunday? My birthday? Pentecost Sunday. Wow. So what happened on the day of... Oh, Jesus wants to get your attention for sure. Pentecost Sunday. What happened on the day of Pentecost? Holy Spirit came upon them. So we studied from Genesis to Revelation to know about, can I have a little more volume? The person of the Holy Spirit, right? Not just tongue-talking experience alone, right? So today it is known as the Trinity Sunday. Normally I don't follow all of these patterns, but I feel the need for the church to learn about the Trinity. The word apologetics comes from a word called apologia, meaning to defend the faith from within and outside. There are many Christians here today who really haven't got a clue about Trinity. There are many people in the world are expecting an answer from a churchgoer about Trinity. A blind cannot lead another blind. That's one of the reasons we have chosen today to be a teaching session about the Trinity. So I've got two people that I'm going to interview. And I'm going to ask questions and they're going to share their perspective and their opinion and their knowledge about Trinity. It's going to be brief and then we're going to study from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Somebody say aloud down. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God in three persons, yet there is one God. Say aloud there, amen. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Blessed what? Trinity. We're not talking about a plural God. We're talking about a singular God. Elohim. The creator. Say aloud the amen. We're going to call Eric Gerald to come. Before I call upon Reverend James as well. So I'm going to ask very simple questions. Can you put this mic up? All right. So, Eric, in your opinion, or in your knowledge of understanding of the having studied a lot, how do you sum up Trinity? Come a little closer. I think uh, the word Trinity would be the human understanding of the Almighty God, mm. the omnipotent, all-powerful, the omnipresent, present everywhere, the omniscient, all-knowing God, yes. the all-wise God, the representation of who He is to what we can understand right now would be Trinity. And uh, you wouldn't find the word Trinity in the Bible. I think exactly. the biggest argument against Christianity would be this. And uh, there is even sects of Christianity called Unitarian Christianity that say God is only one and Jesus is not God. He's just the messenger of God. Uh, I would say that God is beyond what we can comprehend. And the way that his manifestation happens for what we can understand would be in three persons. We say Father, we say the Word, I, I wouldn't say son, I would say the word of God, which we know as Jesus Christ. And Jesus says he is the son of God. Praise God for that. 
yes which means he is of the same nature of god which means he is god and then he says it is by his spirit that he has been raised from the dead and the acts of the apostles will say the spirit of jesus is who led the apostles and that is the same holy spirit at different points he has expressed himself in different ways he has different functions he is the same god wow. he is the same god so in the same way i am a brother i am a son i am a leader or i am a musician i have so many facets of of the same eric who is here that is the expression of who god is to us we find that in the names of god and we also find that in the persons of god mm. wow. and uh, the israelites understood this and said elohim mm. he they didn't say elohe mm. the singular god they said elohim mm. god mm. which does not mean there is more than one it means there is more than one nature to what is happening Amen. it's the same substance you say bricks but they make up one wall mm. right it's it's the same thing for trinity good. yeah very good i like what you said expressions one more question for him quickly you said it is beyond our human comprehensions but how do you try to have relationship with this triune god i think uh, the lord jesus made it very clear he says unless you are born of the water and born of the spirit you will not enter the kingdom of heaven amen and uh, without being born of the water and born of the spirit you will not understand the things of heaven and uh, the apostles and the, the word of god clearly teaches that we need the holy spirit to draw out the depths of god to understand what god wants to teach us so without the holy spirit as our guide without believing we are destined for eternity we have been remade in the nature of christ jesus uh we cannot understand the things of god mm. and the holy spirit as jesus testifies saying he will teach you what he hears mm. he will not speak on his own behalf Amen. which means there is union happening among the persons of god and uh, to have union with this god uh, we need to put off the old nature which is again being born of the spirit in christ jesus we put on the mindset of the lord jesus uh, whom in which the bible says the fullness of wisdom and revelation is contained in jesus christ and so uh, to have union with jesus christ is god teaching you to understand more about him and so when you have the mindset of god teaching you about how things are it's more easy to understand who god is and i think all the other arguments become uh, second fiddle mm. to understanding the person of god to understanding the nature of god to understanding what it is to commune with god to fellowship with god so so your way uh, of having relationship with god is to allow the holy spirit to teach you show you the things of the spirit yes pastor i i believe it comes to where it says you you are not your own anymore you are bought with a price mm. and you're a new creation uh, it's how much i believe that i am a new creation will allow me to commune with god so i don't see it in my flesh i have to see it in my spirit but i as as it is in heaven on earth so i see it manifest mm. here even even with the perishing flesh you can see the glory of god praise yeah. god give it up give it up thank you thank you so much truly appreciate it wow did you learn a thing or two yes okay i'm going to call upon reverend james to also come to the front a theologian pursued the study in the word of god and i'm going to ask him a few questions as well from his perspective because he has traveled quite a bit pastor come and uh, pastored many churches and i'm going to ask him from his experience how would you handle someone when they have doubts about this triune, triune god hmm. what would be your answer come yeah um that that happens you know quite frequently people that have doubts because the uh the reality of god is not of this world um it, it, it's uh when uh, jesus uh told pontius pilate he said my kingdom is not of this world and uh so first i i i've got to um help that person have a sense to know that 
that God is one. He eternally exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that fellowship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the good news about the kingdom. Um, is that Jesus comes and says, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Um, he says this right after his baptism. And the baptism may be the clearest example of, uh, of a triune God. The only place I'm aware of that you see manifest presence of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, heaven's open up. The, the Spirit of God descends from heaven upon Jesus. There's a voice from heaven that says, this is my Son, whom I am well pleased. So the Son of God is in the flesh. The Father is speaking to him, and the Spirit of God is upon him. Now, his ministry is really about how we can enter into this fellowship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Receive Jesus, uh, believe on his name, and you will be given the power and authority to become born again into the family of God. Um, we've come to understand that God in himself is a family. God in himself is the kingdom. And that fellowship we have been uh, born again into. And scripture has a lot to say about how we can have a unique relationship with the spirit, a unique relationship with the father, a unique relationship with Jesus. Um, I have found the uh, upper room discourse to be very helpful because in Jesus' ministry, he lives by the power of the Spirit. He's led by the Spirit. He's anointed by the Spirit. Uh, but also, he has an intimate relationship with the Father as well. He says in John, uh, where we're at today, um, he says, I only, do, I only say what I hear the Father telling me to say. I only do the things the Father wants me to do. Uh, I only go where the Father wants me to go. So there is this unique relationship that Jesus has with the Father and the Spirit. Upper room discourse, Jesus says, I'm going to leave you, uh, but I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm sending the Holy Spirit, another counselor. He's, going to be with, he's been with you. He's going to be in you. He's going to remind you of things that I've said, lead you into all truth, show you things to come. And you have access to the Father, just like I have had access to the Father when I'm gone. Uh, you can go into the Father's presence, ask anything in my name, and you will get audience there. Spirit will be with you, the Father will be with you, and not only that, but I'm going to be in you, and you're going to be in me. We are going to be one. I will never leave you, I never forsake you. So there's an, uh, uh, an opportunity to help people understand how they can have a unique relationship with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when that really takes place, Jesus kind of does the rest. Amen. Yeah. One more question, okay. one more question, yeah. Pastor. See, we live in a pluralistic society, and we live in a country where many gods are represented. How do you present a God who is in three persons, yet there is only one God? Hmm. And what would be your answer, Pastor? Well, many times, God represents himself as one. Now, when you find in scripture they use the word God. We're talking about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as one. Um, when there is a, uh, a delineation about it, uh, it will say, well, the Son has done this. Um, the Father has done this. The, the Spirit does these things. But many times, uh, it's very clear uh, for Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, he is one. But eternally exists in three persons. And so um, there's only one God. Uh, all the others are just demonic deity imposters. Mm. I've been my approach in missions, and the Lord has honored that. Amen. And there are occasions throughout Scripture when God, the Lord God enthroned in heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together manifest their presence against those demonic deity imposters mm. and, uh, and demonstrates himself to be the one and only true God. Wow, thank you, Pastor. Give and it up for Pastor. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. You see, when a question like this is asked to a believer, the believer has no answer that will suffice the need 
of the one who is asking. The whole world is in search for the truth. How many of you understand that? We are all seekers in this world. You have found Jesus and they are still finding Jesus. You believe in the one true God because you had an encounter with him. And they are yet to have an encounter with the triune God. My brothers, my sisters, the Lord our God is one. Let's start there. Say aloud, loud amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. I want you to take notes. When someone asks these questions, I want you to answer them duly with respect. Deuteronomy chapter 6. This was the command that God gave the Israelites. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Next verse. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Say a louder. And then let's fast forward and let's read the 13th verse. Fear the Lord your God, serve him only, say aloud amen, and take your oaths in his name. And the next word is what is going to apply to our context. We live in a nation where there are plenty of other gods. Jesus said, do not follow other gods. It's with a small g for a reason, right? Do not follow the other gods, the gods of the peoples around you. For the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God. And his anger will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the land. He was talking to the Israelites. Let's read the 24th verse, Deuteronomy 6, verse 24. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and kept alive as in the case today. And if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God as he has commanded us, that will be our righteousness somebody say a loud up so that's what you need to understand father's way of communicating righteousness that he desires from us was through worshiping him and him alone say aloud amen number two to follow the decrees and commands that he had given his servants who were there at that point of time somebody say aloud up are we tracking so far all right, let's go to Genesis, to the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and void. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God, in the beginning, who created? God. And what was over the waters? The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Hebrews chapter 1. Quickly. Hebrews chapter 1. Now we talked about Father. We talked about the Spirit of God. We must talk about the Son, Jesus Christ. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through prophets. At many times and in various ways. But in the last days... He has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed as a heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. Say aloud, amen. And how? There was God, there was Holy Spirit. So where was Jesus? Jesus was always there in the Father and with the Father. The Bible says, but in these, now listen to this, the next one. Third verse, the sun is the radiance of God's glory. The exact representation of God's being. Say aloud up. 
there is no less representation exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word after he had provided purification for sins he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven who is that majesty in heaven the father say aloud amen who paid the penalty for you jesus christ say aloud how many of you tracking me so far Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 you're going to learn a lot this is going to help you in your evangelism Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 praise be to the god and father of our lord so there is no doubt that Jesus was the son of god say aloud amen praise be to the god and the father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings in Christ fast forward 7th verse in him we have the redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace say aloud amen so father sent son for what to redeem us through the precious blood of his son for the forgiveness of our sins verse 13 you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth jesus said i am the way the truth and the life the truth the gospel of your salvation what was that that jesus died he paid the penalty he made the way for you to be reconciled unto god the gospel of your salvation is jesus christ say aloud the amen when you believed listen to the word you are marked in him with the seal the promised holy spirit say aloud the amen we read in the third verse father we read in the seventh verse the son we read in the 13th verse the holy spirit somebody say aloud the amen although the word trinity is not mentioned in the bible but the, everything that connects to a triune god is presented to us in the holy scripture say aloud the amen can i drop a truth bomb even the word bible is not there in the bible you carry who even the word second coming is not mentioned in the bible scary isn't it yes or no but everything that is related to the coming back of the lord is mentioned in the book of john chapter 14 can i give you that scripture john chapter 14 open your bibles john 14 John chapter 14 Oh right Verse 3 Let's read from verse 2 My father's house has many rooms if that were not so would I have told you I would have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, what does the Bible say? I will come and take you to be with me so that you also be where I am. Say aloud amen. Where is Jesus? Seated at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Say aloud amen. So what is he saying when he's going to come back all of us who believe in him wait for him shall be taken in glory to be united with God to live eternally with him say aloud up does that make sense are we learning this morning how many of you are learning turn to your neighbor and say neighbor you need this if you claim to be a christian if you have been just warming the bench may the lord open your eyes to see the mysteries that are hidden in God's holy word say aloud up say aloud up amen open your bibles now to the book of genesis i'm 
If you allow me to preach 52 weeks, I will preach on Genesis only. There's so much truth. There's so much that is just there in that first five books of the Bible. All right. Glorious one. Verse 26. Verse 1, verse 26. Let us make mankind in our image. The first time the word us in our is introduced in the scripture. In the beginning itself, the author was inspired by the Holy Spirit to teach you the truth that there is one God, the expressions are in three forms. There is one God in three persons in the Godhead Trinity. Jesus is the second person in the Trinity. Holy Spirit is the one that who came down after Jesus ascended back to heaven from where he had come in the first place. He said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for this grace upon my life. Open your Bibles to the book of Psalm 8 verse 4. Psalm 8 verse 4. What is that that you're so mindful of a man? Psalm 8 verse 4. Human beings that care for them. Scripture is loud and clear. The Lord is saying, David is perplexed in his mind. Why so much love? Why so much grace? Why so much mercy? Why do I get this? That you have made him, including himself, little lower than angels, and you have crowned them with glory and honor. The next one. And you made them rulers over the work of your hands. And you have put everything under their feet. Somebody say it louder. You see now, the Lord created us in his own image. Say it louder, amen. Elohim, El means God. Him represented the masculinity. The father figure of the triune God. Us represents the persons that are in the Trinity. My son, my daughter, I want you to pay close attention. If you don't pay close attention, you will be deceived by the cults that are out there in this world. Like he said, they don't believe Jesus to be God. Jehovah's Witness, they don't. Mormons don't. Muslims don't. Yes or no, sir? Lord of isms and schisms and this and that, they don't accept the Trinity. In fact, in, in Quran, Trinity is considered to be a sin. You and I have been given the grace that through the help of the Holy Spirit, we can read the scripture and we can understand who this triune God in our lives. Say it louder. You see, when Eric said, I want to address Jesus as word. Nothing wrong because that's what John chapter 1 says. In the beginning was the word and the word was with Come on. Yes or no, sir? And he also went on to make a bold statement that Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. You see, if you don't read your scripture carefully, there are people out there who will take you away from the truth. Open your Bibles to the book of First Peter. Chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 15. 
But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Powerful statement. And always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But please do this with gentleness and respect. Every believer should have the ammunition which I would like to call as a knowledge about who God is and what God says about him in his word. Say a louder. Say a louder amen. People will ask you questions. There was a band in the early 90s called Colonial Cousins. They had a famous song. Come as Jesus. Come as Krishna. Come as Buddha. A very famous song in this country. Everybody was singing to it. But not knowing they were being brainwashed. To believe that Jesus is one among other gods. Hello. I believe the Lord is delivering us. You better receive the breakthrough today. Somebody say a louder. Somebody say a louder amen. Christ is not the one with the K. Please understand this. Yes or no sir? Christ is not the one with the K. Glorious one. So a church should equip its believers with the ammunition of the right answers. But when you do give an answer, the Bible says, do this with gentleness and respect. That's how you represent God. You may have the knowledge, the Bible says knowledge puffs up the head. But if you don't have gentleness and respect, you are demeaning another God's creation. And by doing so, you have already lost the ground to speak the truth to them. Am I making it clear this morning? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, may the Lord my God open your eyes to see the mysteries that are hidden in God's holy word. Say aloud the amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Revelation. We were in Genesis. Now let's go to the Revelations. Like I said, I'm not prepared yet to preach on Revelations. But I'll give you a couple of scriptures today. When the time comes right, we shall. All right, say aloud. Verse 6 onwards. He has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God. And Father, to him be the glory, power, and forever. And ever. Amen. Seventh verse. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. The reality is this. Here's the eighth one. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord our God. This is it. This is it. Who is, who was, and who is to come. Say aloud the Amen. In Hebrews 13, the Bible very clearly says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Let's read the 17th verse and 18th verse. Revelation 1, 17 and 18. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. And what does he say? I am the first and I am the last. I am the living one. I was dead. Now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades is nothing but hell. Hades is nothing but what? Hell. Matthew 16 verse 18, the Bible says, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gate 
Hades shall not prevail against it. So he is the God who was, who is, who is to come. Say aloud, Amen. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the one who lives forever. Somebody say aloud. So there is another question. If God lives forever, how did God die on that cross? You need to answer this question. If God lives forever, how did he die on the cross? Anybody has an answer? Sorry? He rose again. Amen. So did he die? The Bible says, I was dead. Correct, no? The person of Jesus Christ who came, walked on this earth, died. But the God who is seated on the throne lives forever. Come on, say aloud the amen. And that person who died was also resurrected through the power of the Holy Spirit back unto life. Bible says, I have not yet been glorified. Yes or no, sir? You want an answer? John chapter 8. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, glorious one. John chapter 8. Thank you, Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. God is here and he will speak to us. Say a louder amen. All right, John chapter 8, verse 54. Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him and I obey his word. Yes, are we there? No, 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 no. Are we there in the same scripture? What is that? Okay. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. And saw it and was glad. And they said to Jesus, you're not yet 50 years old, they said to him. And you have seen Abraham. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered what? Before Abraham was born, I am. You know what their response was? They were looking for stones to stone him to death. And this they picked up the stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself slipping away from the temple grounds. They were happy when he was performing miracles. They were happy when he was raising the dead back to life and opening the blind eyes. And the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, the lame to walk. Everything was fine. Even the water turning into wine, they were happy. The minute Jesus said, I and God are one. Father is one. I and Father and the Spirit, we are all one. They could not accept it. Because for them, God has to be one. That's why the Jewish people still find it very hard to accept that Jesus who came and died as the Messiah. Hear, O Israel, for the Lord your God is one God. They know there is only one God, Elohim. And they do not want to accept Jesus Christ. They do not want to accept the Holy Let's read Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19. Let's put things in perspective. Matthew 28, verse 19. Jesus said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, 
He said, baptizing them. Look at the order. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So there is an order in Trinity. And there is also divinity in Trinity. Because they all share the Godedness. Somebody say aloud, louder, Amen. They all share what? The Godedness. The Trinity shares the divinity of God Himself. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Maybe you should read the 18th verse to understand this omnipotent God. Jesus came to them and said, All authority under heaven and on earth has been given to me. And Jesus said also, Where two or three gathered in my name, there I am also omnipresent God. When he had an encounter with the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, he asked her about her husband. She gave an answer and he said, no, 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 I know the whole thing. Let me tell you, even the one whom you're living with is not your omniscience, the God who knows everything. Amazing, isn't it? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't sleep today. The world needs this word and they're waiting to hear it from you. And they're waiting to what? Hear it from you. I really wish there are a lot of analogies that people try to explain the Trinity to make sense to you. Let me give you a couple of analogies, see if that makes sense to you. There is egg. In that egg, there is a shell. Yes or no, sir? Then there is a gluey content and then there is a yolk. Yes or no, sir? Some people try to explain Holy Spirit like that. Even if you try to match three matchsticks into one, it will all glow together in one. And someone explained when they were a missionary to the native people inside the islands in the Southeast Asian continent. They could not understand how to, you know, comprehend in the human mind to explain it to them. So they found a way. One day they were sitting in the bonfire. So the missionary got that hole. The bulb went on. He said, okay, now I can explain. The wood is the Father God. The fire is the Lord Jesus. And the warmth you feel in the midst of that cold winter is the Holy Spirit's presence. I said, wow. You think about it, there was a guy called Saint Augustine, Saint Iranius, Saint Ignatius. All of them tried to explain and understand this Trinity. In their own little ways, they came to a conclusion. But what meant most to me is how Augustine found this answer. He was baffled as to understand, to explain this great big God in human terms. Eric said, for us human beings to understand these things, they've coined a word called Trinity. Right? And that's how we can understand this triune God. He was walking the beach one day. And he saw a little boy, he made a little hole in that show. And he had a little mug. He was getting the water from the sea and pouring it in. Not realizing the water is being sucked back into the earth. And this guy was so puzzled and went and asked, what are you doing little man? He said, I'm trying to bring the whole ocean into what I'm doing. And he said, now I've got my answer. I can never explain the Trinity to everyone in the way they will understand. You can try to comprehend, but you can only understand as much as God allows you to understand. Somebody say a louder. Say a louder, amen. Such a big God. There was another incident. A Sunday school teacher taught a girl about accepting Jesus as Lord. And she was very happy. 
came home and very puzzled at the same time. I'm happy I accepted Jesus, but I don't know where that Jesus is. So the mother looking at her wondering, something is wrong with my daughter today. She asked her, honey, what is wrong with you? And she asked this question to the mother and mother had no answer. And she also tried to figure it out in a way that you could explain a little mind of a six-year-old can understand and comprehend. And she asked this question to the mother, mother, how big is Jesus? How big is? Anyone here dare to answer? Because Paul writes the depth, the wide, the knowledge, the depth of the love of God. Correct? No? How high? I can't. <laughs> she said, God is so big. So big that I don't know how, how big he is, but he's very big. That's how Jesus is. Then the little girl said, I have received that big God in me. If I have received that big God in me, every pose of mind must ooze out Jesus Christ. Say louder. Say louder. You see now, sometimes we try to put this big God in a little box and try to make him understand the way we can only comprehend. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he is beyond our capabilities of our human reasoning and understanding. Somebody say aloud down. Yeah. All right. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 14. We read John 10 as a scripture portion which was very clear to you about who Jesus was. John 14, I'm going to read from 1 to 16 slowly. Please understand, this is for your good. And we will read John 17 to finish. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus said to them, you believe in God. There is a semicolon. And they said, believe also in me. So you are saying there is a God. And there is a God who sent me, and that is me. So believe in him, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have not told you? I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me. That you also may be where I am. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? So stop this. This gives me a counselor. The disciple who walked with Jesus did not understand the divinity. The disciple who came to this country, died as a martyr, did not understand where the father was. And how to correlate the relationship between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit who is yet to come that day. He said, please tell me, how can we know the way? Then Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So you're not going to heaven. Let me shake that out of you. You're going to meet the Father. Say aloud, Amen. It's not about heaven. It's about being in the presence of the Father. Say aloud, Amen. It's about being in the presence of the triune God. Say aloud. You see now. He said, if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Imagine the perplexity of the mind of these little disciples. Ah, when did we see Father? I only see you. Then the Bible said, If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough. Now Thomas went. Now Philip showed up. He said, Boss, this is not getting here. 
You know when you go to certain lectures, some things go over your head. This was certainly going beyond their head. And they had no clue what he was saying, but they're wanting to find out. Most of you may not understand, but if you're curious to learn, God will deliver you. God will teach you. Say it louder. If you're eager to learn, God will teach you. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Say a louder, Amen. That's the bold statement of the triune God. Say a louder, Amen. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living. Oh, come on. He explained how that works. Where is the Father? Living in Jesus Christ. Somebody say a louder. Somebody say a louder. Amen. It is the Father who is living in me, who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, truly I say unto you. If anyone believes in me, he will do the works that I've been doing. And they will even do greater things than this. Because I am going where? Where was Jesus going? Father. Somebody say a loud down. Thank God he went to the Father. We have the Holy Spirit with us. Somebody say a loud down. Very, very important. Say a loud um. All right. And then let's read the 15th verse. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. So this also explains Holy Spirit is also an eternal person. Say a loud day, Amen. How many of you can believe that? Say a louder amen. amen. Holy Spirit will also what? Live forever. Just as Father lives forever, just as the Son lives forever, even the Spirit of God lives forever. Whew, any doubt so far? No? Very good. Let's open our Bibles now. Thank you, Jesus, to John chapter 17. Glorious one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. After Jesus said this, oh, he looked toward heaven and prayed. Please tell me why he looked up to heaven. Do you have an answer to that? Because father was in heaven. When the disciples asked him in Matthew, teach us to pray. What did he teach them? Our father who art in heaven. I like this. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people so that he might give eternal life to those you have given him. Third verse is so important. Huh? Now this is eternal life. That they know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you have given me to do. That is to die on the cross, preach about the kingdom of God, and then to be ascended, to be seated at the right hand of God, the Father. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I have. Hello? With you? Before the world began, say it louder. 
That's why I like Genesis 1. In the beginning, God, which means God was there before the creation of this world. Say a louder. How many of you can say a louder amen to that? See that word? I was there with you. I was there with you. Let's read. Verse 16, 15. Verse 15, 16, and 17. John 17, 15, 16, and 17. My prayer is that, not that you take them out of the world, but you shall protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Hello? Sanctify them by the truth, for your word is the truth. Verse 23. I in them and you in me. Now this is the Trinity living inside of you. Hello. Say a loud amen. How Father lived in Jesus. Jesus lived in the Father. Spirit lives with him. Now the Trinity wants to live inside of you. He says, I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Somebody say a loud amen. Then the world will know that you sent me and you have loved them even as you have loved me. We'll stop here. Oh, glory. I need to give you this scripture before I close and finish with this couple of scriptures here. Ephesians chapter 4. Come on, let's stand to our feet if that's possible. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4. Glorious one. Can you come? Thank you, Jesus. Verse 3. Onwards. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And this is the doctrine of the church. One plus one plus one is not three, it is still one. How one times one is still one. Say it louder. Does that make sense? There is one body, one spirit, just as you are called to one hope. One hope. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's why I don't understand the child baptism. That's the christening ceremony if you have to call it. Right? It's not baptism. Baptism is immersed in water. For the forgiveness of your sins. There is only one baptism. One God. I like this word. And Father of all. Who is over all. And through all. And in all. Come on. He just said it. The Trinity is inside you. Somebody say it loud down. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is inside you. Now let's go back to John 17. Verse 24. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. And to see my glory... And the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. He addresses the Father in a manner that only Jesus can. He said, righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And they know that you have sent me. And I have made you known to them. And will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them. And that I myself, come on, may be in you. Say it louder. So God is inside of you. Say it louder. Amen. That's why we boldly say, he that is in me is greater than the one who is in this world. And the Bible also records in 2 Corinthians 5, you are not ordinary people, you are now Christ ambassadors, ministers of reconciliation, representatives of God. How? God inside you. Say aloud, Amen. What type of a God? The triune God 
is living inside of you. I don't have time. But if you have questions more, please meet me. I would be very happy to answer you with what I know. What I don't know, I will be honest to tell you, I don't know. But what I know has delivered me. Say aloud, Amen. What I've come to learn from others has opened my eyes to see this big God. I like the way Paul wrote it in the book of Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 13. The last scripture. Jesus. Glorious one. This is how I give benediction every Sunday. But I want all of you to read it out loud together as you see it in the screen. Trinity is explained in one scripture. Isn't it? Whew. May the grace, can we read it together? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Romans 8 1 says for there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ come on John 3 17 says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to deliver the world and save the world through him today is your day of salvation the gospel has been preached to you. You've heard the message. As you heard the message, may the Lord deliver you from all the bondages that you're struggling under. Every wickedness die in Jesus' name. Every evil practices die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every addiction to substance lose your power in the mighty name of Jesus. The Spirit of God who lives inside you and inside me is the one that empowers us every day to walk away from sin, to walk away from the temptations, to walk away from the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride, the arrogance, that selfish nature, the deception, the manipulation, the lies that we believe in. He enables us to walk away from those things. You know where to walk to? To the Father. To the throne room of God's grace. Where Elohim is seated. Ooh, that's why Jesus came. To present us holy, blameless, and spotless before the Father. Wherever you are, just speak to God for the next one minute. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for the things that I've done. Sorry for the sins that I've committed. Sorry for the words I have told, spoken too soon. Sorry that I have doubted. Sorry I have blasphemed your name. Sorry I have not lived up to my commitment. Lord Jesus, I now know there is no condemnation. I now know there is deliverance. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, says the Word of God. And I receive my freedom to Today, the Spirit shall deliver you in Jesus' mighty name. Glorious one. Come on, open up your mouth and I'm about to be done. You got to pray. And that's what Paul says. Uh, I don't run like a runner running aimlessly. I don't beat like a boxer beating in the air. Rather, I train and discipline my 
so that the one whom that I'm preaching as I am preaching I may not be disqualified for the price may God our father help us this morning may God our father help us he did not let his son die and rot in that grave at the right time he brought him back to life come on somebody if that same god who sent the holy spirit to raise jesus from the dead he will resurrect every death situation in your life open up your mouth and say lord god you help me jesus though he was tempted in every way yet he did not commit a sin may that same grace come upon you in the mighty name of jesus utala bushete rekere mo mahandele kala bushita raba come on come on shele re 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 lift up lift up lift up talk to god talk to god talk to god child of god oh he's one god there should be no other god there is only one king there is only one redeemer there is only one savior one god one father one lord in all who lives inside all mahanda leke de bushe tere ba mahanda la kara bashe tere ba jesus welcome holy spirit Come on lift up your hands to heaven and worship. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome Come on somebody We are in your prayers Fill us with your power Live inside of me Lift your holy hands in worship and sing Show the living water Comforter and counselor, take complete control. You're the living waters. You're the heaven come on we welcome holy spirit we are in your presence fill us with your power live inside of See the benediction you have read it out loud in 2 Corinthians 13:14 So I'm going to allow the team to lead us from here as the Lord leads them and they will wind the service The God who is in you and in me is greater than the one who is in the world say it louder He said you dear children of God are from God and you have overcome this world don't you neighbor as a neighbor you are an overcomer because Christ defeated the death on the cross say a louder amen the power say this out to be the power that raised Jesus from the dead is living inside you and inside me as long as the father is seated on the throne in heaven victory is yours and mine say aloud da say aloud da amen lift your holy hands to heaven 
show the living world Comforter and Counselor Holy Spirit come and take complete control We're gonna 